I'm Carol Turek and I am photographing every hummingbird species. Come with me as I explore Central and South America to find all 360 plus species. Some of them are critically endangered and difficult to find, but we will find them all. This video is the first video to show you what it is like to go on the trek to find the blue-bearded helmet crest hummingbird in northern Colombia. The blue-bearded helmet crest was thought to be extinct. It hadn't been seen since 1946, but then in 2015, Carlos Julio Rojas and Christian Vasquez were up surveying the Paramo for fire damage due to bad farming practices. They happened to see the bird and snapped a picture. Very few people have been up there and have seen this bird since, and these videos are going to give you an idea why. William Oriana of Beaks and Peaks Birding and Adventure Tours in Honduras and I flew to Santa Marta, Colombia. We were met in the morning by Roger Rodriguez, who would be our local bird guide, and Roger had been up there a couple of times, so uh, he would be leading us. We piled into the truck and took a very rough road up to the little town of San Pedro and on to Casa de la Montaña, which is the house where we would stay the night before the big hike. After we got there, we took another hike in the area to try to find some other hummingbirds. Uh, we were looking particularly for the Santa Marta Blossom Crown. Check out the beautiful sunset from up here. You can see behind my back. If I sound a little out of breath, it's because we just came back from a, a practice run hike uh, to see the Santa Marta Blossom Crown, which is an endemic hummingbird to this area. And we found him and I got a couple pictures. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, morning came and I have to admit, I was a bit nervous. I was here with Roger, we've worked for three years and we've known our work. Thinking in Carol. William Alzate of Explorer Sierra was in charge of getting us permission to enter the land. And he told us that we had permission, and not only did we have permission, but the Kogi people granted us the permission to camp on the shores of the second Sevilla Lake. Um, that apparently does not usually happen, and it is quite an honor. So William wished us well in our journey and hoped that we saw the helmet crest. This is the start of the trail to go up to see the blue-bearded helmet crest. Raphael is here with his gorgeous animals that are going to help carry our stuff up the mountain. And um, I can't believe that all this is for me and you so we can see the blue-bearded helmet crest. There are quite a few coffee plantations in the area, and the only way to transport the beans down to the town to send on the way to market is on the backs of the mules that use the same trails that we were hiking on. Along the trail, we were looking for other birds and other hummingbirds, and uh, they spotted these two little fledgling lesser violet ear hummingbirds sitting on a branch right next to each other waiting for mama to come feed them. They were so adorable. William got great video of them, and I've got a couple good pictures too. further up the trail, we stopped for a fruit break. We're having a little break for some fruit and Luis brought me my favorite fruit in the world. This is called a granadilla and uh, you can rarely find them in the United States, but I have to figure out how to plant one of these trees so I can have my own supply. They look really gross, but they're so sweet and so delicious. Mm. Thank you, Louise. The 
Santa Marta Mountains are not part of the Andes. It's its own coastal range in northern Colombia. The interesting thing about it is, is it's only about 25 miles from the beach to the highest mountain point at 18,700 feet. That's pretty unusual. Uh, the area has two national parks that encompasses about 1.8 million acres. And this area is protecting the largest number of endangered species on the planets. Not only birds, but amphibians and other animals. We all post by the sign that marked the boundary of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta National Park. We are still on our way to the first camp in our quest to the Bluebird the Hemicrest. Uh, we are doing pretty well, to be honest. Like, it's already like not even noon, and we have done like, like a good part of the of the today's trail. It got to the point where I told Roger, if you see a hummingbird, don't tell me. I just want to concentrate on getting one foot in front of the other. The only hummingbird I'm interested in now is the blue bearded helmet crest. We've stopped for lunch. I'm not sure what this is. Chicken wrapped in banana leaves with um, beans, potatoes, plantains. Delicious. Hopefully this will give me the energy to go like 17 more feet. <laughs> along and it seemed like we started going down and we were going down more <laughs> and it felt so good not to be going up uh, so we kept going down and we reached the water there was a stream where all our water bottles got refilled but the problem with this nice little down hike is we had to go all the way up the other side again. More hiking up, up, up. Always up. started rolling in as we were rolling into the first campsite. We just hiked 10 miles and gained 3,700 feet in elevation over that 10 miles. I can't believe I was worried about camping. After that hike, I could have slept well if I were hanging upside down like a bat. Woohoo! We did it the first day! Our campsite for that first night was on the grounds of the home of an Arawako family. They are indigenous to the area and allowed us to camp on their land. Well, I had to get a good night's sleep because from what I hear, I just completed the easy day. A Snyder led the way and we were on our way to the top. 
the road ahead it twists and turns and the sun beats down and it burns but i keep keep on pushing through and every step quicker than the last my feet tread down this beaten path and i keep keep on pushing through Today we were only going to go 7 miles. <laughs> only. But we would gain 3000 feet in elevation over those 7 miles. So it was going to be steeper and uphill most of the way. I'm here with Al Snyder, our lead guide who's taking us up this hill. We've come a bit of the ways, but we are about ready to attack what is known as the killer hill part of this hike. I'm already out of breath, but darn it, I'm gonna do it. Whose idea was this? This could not possibly have been my idea. Yeah, it was mine. <laughs> Come too far in this to raise my flag and call it quits. So I keep, oh, I keep on pushing through. Oh, with every step, my heart it pounds. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure I've had my doubts, but I must keep, I must keep pushing through. Rafael, Luis, and Juli had stayed behind to pack up all the gear and put them on the mules, and they were now catching up to us. Rafael told us the names of his mules and his horse. Esta mula cada una tiene su nombre. Este se llama el venado, la gaviota, el pequeñito que es el muñeco y la yegua es la mona. You can see where Huli is pointing across the mountain. That is where the El Dorado Resort is, the Pro Aves Resort that everybody goes to to go birding and see the wonderful Santa Marta endemics. But you have to be on this side of the hill to see the Santa Marta Wren and the Blue Bearded Helmet Crest because they prefer a much higher elevation. evidence everywhere that much of the land up here had been and still was being cleared for grazing. And this is one of the reasons why birds such as the Helmet Crest and the Santa Marta Wren are endangered. The area where they thrive is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I had given Roger explicit instructions never to let me know how much further we had to go. If he said something like, well, we're halfway there, and in my mind, I thought we were almost there, that would not be good for me. <laughs> so I never had any idea how much further we had to go. We've stopped for a lunch break, uh, which actually means we're not almost there. Every time we round a bend, I think we're there. But I'm have you know, in the States, I've never seen tuna packed with vegetables, but that's what I have here. This smells great. It's really good tuna and I'm starving. <laughs>
glad us Snyder knew where he was because at this point everything was looking pretty much the same to me until we came to a little stream. Then it was a relentless climb over one hill, then another, then another. Every time we got to the top of a hill, I swore I was going to see the water of the Sevilla Lakes, but no. Then we rounded a bend around one of the hills and a Snyder pointed out water. <laughs> I broke down. I was looking at the first Sevilla Lake. further to hike to get to the second lake but after seeing that water in my mind we were already there so I was walking on air. almost finished the hike, you can see the second lake behind us. This is the lake where people normally see the helmet crest. Um, I've got to thank all these people. William's behind the camera, but you all know William Oriana from Beaks and Peaks. This is Katinka Doman from Beaks and Peaks. Be I can't even talk. Beaks and Peaks. This is Al Snyder who has been helping me step through the rocks here without killing myself. <laughs> Luis was carrying my camera equipment. God bless you, Luis. <laughs> and this is Roger. He's uh, the local guide that's been up here a few times and helping us get through. I'm a little emotional right now because, <laughs> you know, I sometimes I even wondered myself if I was going to make it this far, but I was determined to, and I can't believe that I'm hopefully going to see this bird tomorrow. Huli greeted us at the campsite with some agua panela, which is a hot tea made with sugar cane to help give us energy. This map of the trail shows the route we took from the town of San Pedro all the way up to the Sevilla Lakes. This was a total of 18 miles that took us up to an elevation of about 10,000 feet. After a little rest, we hiked up to the third Sevilla Lake where we would be filming the next day. The area here is so beautiful. I can certainly understand why the Kogi people consider this ground to be sacred. We got up in the morning and it was cold. It's morning at Sevilla Lake. This is our campsite right on the lake. This is my tent. I never was into camping, but this is pretty cool. You know, I had been warned how cold it was gonna be. Uh, and yes, they were right. 
I was head to toe in long underwear and down, so I was okay. But when we got up in the morning, there was frost on the ground, but I didn't care about any of that. I was so excited that this was the day that hopefully I was gonna see this bird. We went up to the rock where Huli was cooking breakfast. We ate and then we went on the little hike up to the third lake to look for the helmet crest. While we were up there looking around for our first helmet crest, we looked up and there was a glorious Andean condor flying overhead. I took this to be a really good omen. Suddenly, Roger said, there he is. And on top of a branch, way up in a tree, there was a helmet crest. It took me a, a, a few seconds to see where Roger was looking, but when I found him, I got a picture. Luis noticed that the bird seemed to be flying a loop and it would fly way up high onto the rocks on sort of like up a cliff. Well, William and Luis climbed up there. So Luis found the general area where the bird was, but when they went up there, William found the perch. I scrambled up the side of the cliff with a lot of help from the guys, and there was a beautiful male helmet crest that sat on one area and was feeding on some flowers right next to where he was perched. The plant is an endemic plant in Colombia. The Latin name is Berberis acutinerva. There were lots of flowers on this plant, so the bird had plenty of food just to hang out right there all day. We spent three hours in this one spot taking pictures of this one bird. He hung out here the whole time and didn't seem to care at all that we were so close to him taking pictures. He might have been just as interested in us as we were in him. We were no more than 40, 50 feet at the most away from this bird. And we were there in a line with the scope set up, taking videos, Katinka and I clicking away with our cameras. The bird didn't seem to care that we were there at all. I don't think he sees humans very often, so I, he clearly was not afraid of us. We got most of our pictures and video of this bird from probably 11 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, a time when Roger said they never see the bird. So we all learned a lot about this bird's behavior. It turns out that the bird doesn't like the sun. So as soon as the sun comes up over the rocks, it kind of disappears and finds a place in the shade very near a food source. And that's what this bird did. We're at the end of our full day of shooting the blue bearded helmet crest. And I must say this was fantastic. You could see Se Sevilla lakes in the background. Um, we were shooting from what seemed to me to be like the side of a cliff, but <laughs> that seemed to be where this one bird wanted to perch almost all day long. So I got some, we got some great photos and video of this bird. The sun started to set over the Sevilla lakes and we would be saying goodbye tomorrow morning. We got up early the next morning and started the long hike down.
we got back down to that stream and Katinka and I both decided to wash our hair. Oh, the water was ice cold and after hiking, that just felt so good. <sighs> Not good. <laughs> You can see that a lot of the trails that go up to this area are really erosion trails. There were lots of areas with deep gullies with a lot of logs and tree branches in them that obviously washed down during a rainstorm. I would not like to be caught up here in a severe storm. Before we went on this trip, I was telling people that I was more worried about going down than coming up. Going down steep areas is, is a lot more difficult than going up. I must say that a Snyder helped me every step of the way. We hiked down most of the way that first day and spent the night camped on the property of a small Arawako village. In the morning, Huli and O'Snyder made us breakfast with fresh arepas. Then we started the hike and we were back down to San Pedro in time for lunch. You're looking at some other birds that we photographed on this trip. There were a lot of birds, common and rare, some endemics. We didn't see one, but a Santa Marta screech owl called to us all night at the first campsite. Now the endemic Santa Marta wren is found up at the Sevilla Lakes in the same area as the Helmet Crest. There was also a red rump chat tyrant, a Tyrian metal tail, which is another high altitude hummingbird that I have photographed previously, and a buff breasted mountain tanager. The Santa Marta brush finch is another endemic that we saw. I don't usually photograph non-hummingbirds, but the most adorable rufous-breasted chat tyrant jumped right in front of my lens, so I couldn't resist. We did it. We're back down. This was just an amazing trip. That trail is hard. Let me tell you, it's hard. But I was determined to make it, and thanks to Nature Columbia and Explorer Sierra, um, and all the support team I had getting up there, Julie cooking our meals, Roger, who was our main birding guide, we pet Luis, who thank God carried my camera equipment. I couldn't have made it up there without him. And Rafael back here, uh, who took care of the animals, took care of all the, the mules taking our, our stuff up the mountain. And where is Al Snyder? <laughs> who uh, helped me every step of the way so I wouldn't fall either on my butt or my face. Um, thank you, everybody. This was really a dream of mine to photograph that bird. And now I have probably about 400 photographs of it to sort through. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Katinka, William Moriana is videoing, so you don't see him, but thank you, Beaks and Peaks. I couldn't do anything without them. They are in charge of all my trips. Thank you, I love you all, bye-bye. <laughs>